Okay, the next uh, exam that we're going to do is the shoulder exam and similar to uh, all the other joints that you're going to examine, you're going to try and do it again in an organized fashion uh, with the first step always being inspection. And so when we're inspecting the shoulder joint, um, we want to look for any asymmetry in terms of one shoulder height compared to the other shoulder height. We want to look for any asymmetry in muscle bulk that you may notice from the front. You want to notice any asymmetry in terms of any swelling around the acromioclavicular joint on each side. Um, and if you wouldn't mind turning around, sir. Again, when you inspect from behind, you want to look for any atrophy um, over the area where your supraspinatus might be or atrophy where your infraspinatus might be. The other thing I usually include in the inspection portion of the exam is to look for a wing scapula uh, suggestive of an injury to the long thoracic nerve which innervates your serratus anterior. So to look for a wing scapula, we'll have you do that push up up against the wall, take a step back and go down real slow and as he comes back up real slow, doing his perfect push up, you want to look for any winging of the scapula with one scapula possibly sticking out further on one side compared to the other. His was perfect. And um, that concludes the inspection portion of the examination. Palpation is the next portion of the exam. And I really think you should palpate the entire uh, shoulder joint, uh, all the possible landmarks that um, could be injured. Um, and you would start actually all the way out at the SC joint and palpate the clavicle all the way to its attachment at the acromioclavicular joint. So start at the SC joint, palpate the clavicle all the way to the AC joint looking for any tenderness or deformity. Uh, from there, the next place you can palpate is the proximal biceps tendon in the bicipital groove. Tenderness over that area would be suggestive of bicipital tendonitis. You can palpate just lateral to your bicipital groove where the rotator cuff attaches in, and uh, the subacromial bursa is also in that area, suggestive of pathology to either the rotator cuff attachment or the uh, subacromial bursa. Next um, after palpation is range of motion. And in uh, range of motion, there are six uh, ranges of motion that you need to put the shoulder through. So the first range of motion we'll have you go through is flexion. So flexion is going this way all the way to the top and we'll have the patient actively go through flexion. And you want to get, see if they can get all the way over the top. He looks like he's lacking maybe five degrees from full flexion. Uh, the next step is to, I'm going to have you turn sideways for extension so they can see where you're going. Well, let's actually have you do flexion again this way. So go up flexion all the way to the top. And then we'll have you extend. So you want to just bring your arms all the way back down and bring them back towards me. And do they have the same degree of extension in both shoulders? Okay, now you can face the cameras again and go back to the neutral position. We'll have you take a step towards me so you don't hit your hand on the wall. Next would be abduction. So abduction, you're going to bring your hands up this way and go all the way over your head. And he has full abduction and you can bring it back down. And then the next uh, step would be um, a deduction, which is sometimes hard to look at. There's two ways to look at a deduction. One is to have them go straight across this way and see if they have any limitation in a deduction. And you can bring it back down and do the same thing with the other shoulder. Very good. And the other way to do a deduction to try and uh, measure if they're lacking any, we'll have you turn around, is to combine a deduction and internal rotation, which some people call the Apley scratch test. And what we have you do is bring your thumb up your back one at a time as far as you can. So on that side, he can reach sort of the middle of his thoracic spine. And on the other side, he's lacking range of motion and can only bring his thumb to the top of his lumbar spine, suggested of limitation in internal rotation and a deduction on the right shoulder. Very well done. Now you can face the camera again. Uh, the next step is to look at just straight external rotation and internal rotation. So we'll have you bring your arms like so, and we'll have you externally rotate as far as you can back this way. And then we'll have you internally rotate coming down this way as far as you can. Okay, and we'll do have you do the same thing uh, going sideways so the camera can appreciate it. You want to go external rotation this way and internal rotation going down.
Good. Now you can face the camera. Now strength testing. Um, the first strength test we're going to do is what they call the empty can test, which is very specific for your supraspinatus uh, tendon and um, supraspinatus muscle. If the supraspinatus has tendonitis in it, this exam may just cause pain. On the other hand, if there's gross weakness in your supraspinatus, it's very suggestive of a rotator cuff tear. So to do the empty can test, what you want to have the patient do is abduct their shoulders to 90 degrees. Okay, actually, turn towards me. Pretend, the reason they call it an empty can test is because they're supposed to pretend that they have a beer can in their hand. And then you have them empty the beer can, so that's internally rotating their arms and bringing their arms in about 10 degrees towards the examiner. And then you want them to pull their, push their hands up towards the ceiling and you're going to pull them down towards the floor and you want to see if there's any weakness. Now just pretend that this one's really weak. So if this one stays up and I can just bring that one down with two fingers, that's very suggestive of a rotator cuff tear. The other ways to examine the rotator cuff in terms of strength are to have you lock your elbows at your side. Come out just a little bit. And we'll have them, uh, in terms of external rotation, you have your hands on the outside aspect of their hands and you have them push out against your hands externally rotating while you try and push their hands towards their trunk. And for internal rotation, so that you're, you're uh, trying to get a good measure of their strength, you cross your hands and then you bring your hands in towards your trunk so that they can't overcome you. You're using your internal rotators at the same time. The other way to do it, if you want, is to just uh, put your fist right inside their palm and again bring your hands together. But it's easier for them to do that because you don't have as much strength in that type of an exam. So if you really want to get a measure of their strength and make sure that you're putting your strength against their strength, just cross your hands and have them internally rotate at the same time. Good. So the next uh, step when looking at the shoulder is to look at the laxity in the shoulder. Uh, the easiest way to look at laxity is to do what is called the apprehension test. And what you do when you do the apprehension test is actually put them in the same position that they would go in if they were going to dislocate their shoulder. And most people dislocate their shoulder anteriorly, so this is looking for anterior laxity in the shoulder. And what we have them do is abduct their shoulder to 90 degrees, externally rotate their shoulder with a firm pressure on the posterior aspect of their humerus, and a positive apprehension test, the patient looks scared. It's not necessarily pain in that position, but they're scared that their shoulder is going to pop out and become dislocated. In terms of looking at the hand position, we'll just have the patient turn this way. And you can see that my, hand, my right hand is on the, uh, grasping the, just below his right wrist. My palm stabilizes his shoulder blade, and my thumb is pushing his humerus from behind anteriorly in terms of trying to dislocate that shoulder. The last uh, portion of the shoulder exam is the uh, special tests for impingement. And uh, there's two tests that you can uh, look at in terms of impingement. Impingement um, signifies that you're bringing the humeral head up into the coracoacromial arch and pinching the rotator cuff tendon. And the near impingement test, the best way to think about it is bringing the arm near to the ear. You as the examiner just bring their arm to the top and see if that reproduces significant discomfort when they get their arm in that flexed position um, as they bring their humeral head up into the coracoacromial arch. The other test described by uh, Dr. Hawkins is the Hawkins uh, impingement sign. And the Hawkins impingement sign, you do the same thing in terms of bringing that humeral head into the coracoacromial coracoacromial arch, but in this instance you have them flex their shoulder to 90, um, have their elbow flexed at 90, and you just try and internally rotate their shoulder, again trying to bring that humeral head up into that coracoacromial arch and seeing if that uh, reproduces some discomfort. Good.